my way with a soul never die my darkest my darkest night will turn to day away the soul never dies dear friends no sad farewells no tea no tear dim die where all where all is love oh where the soul never dies a rose a rose is blue men there for me and where the soul of man never die and I and, and I will spend eternity and away the soul never die no sad no oh sad no sad farewells no tear no tear damned I where all where all where there is peace and love oh and the soul I never dies good morning it is good to be here this morning, it is good to be able to be back here at Clinton Avenue once again. However, it is not the same. It is not the same. And I am in a very precarious position and I'm quite sure that you are in a peculiar position as well. Because God saw fit to call our minister, our friend, uh, his child home. Unexpectedly. It was Unexpectedly, as far as he was concerned, it was unexpectedly as far as we are concerned. But it was not unexpectedly as far as God was concerned. And God knew this before the foundation of the world. And so therefore, being human, we are still trying to wrap our hearts around what has taken place. And of course, this week, we want to try to carry on. The brothers, the leaders uh, met on yesterday uh, to decide as to the procedure from here. I told them that I wanted to talk to them after that and they concluded that Brother Lawton would want us to continue on with the workshop as planned. And I told them I would gladly accommodate their wish that he is not here in person, but he is here in spirit. I can see him in my mind sitting right there. And uh, he want us to continue on. Uh, he would say, uh, uh, no COVID would stop us from saving souls. Uh, I should stop us from saving souls. And he would also say no transition of himself or anyone else should stop us from saving souls. And so you want to, reason, want to know the reason why we're continuing on 
It is as the request of the leadership and also we know that Brother Lawton would want us to continue on as difficult as it is. As difficult as it is. And I believe, and I will say more at the beginning of the service uh, in uh, the worship service, I would be saying more. But I believe that he would want us to use this as an opportunity to save most souls. I, I just believe that he would want us uh, uh, to, to uh, look through our tears and look through our sadness and look through our emptiness and see that there are most souls that need to be saved because that is where his heart was. So I will say more. I do want to say this is that I was probably one of the last individuals that talked to him at the hotel. He picked me up at the hotel, brought me to the hotel. I hadn't seen Brother Lawson in about three years, actually. I hadn't seen him, uh, I hadn't seen him before his surgery and those difficulties. And so I didn't know the results of that. I knew the results of my surgery some 25 years, going on 30 years ago that I had the same surgery. So I didn't know because different people act different ways and I had my bout uh, uh, with it afterward, but thank God I'm still here. And so he put me out under the couple and parked and said I would come in. And he walked in leaning over and I didn't know whether this was the results of, of the surgery or what. And after we checked in, he started to walk off. He said, these days, he said, I can't walk very far, I got to sit down and rest. So he sat right down in the chair. And so we talked about our surgeries and compared uh, the after effect and everything and all about 10, 15 minutes and then he got up. And I said, look at here, you go home and get you some rest. And he said, okay. then know that he perhaps was having a heart attack at that time. Because as soon as he got here, rather than going home, I was called and told as to what had taken place. And so, it was a shock to all of us. It was a shock to the brotherhood. But, we know that that's what we all live for. That's what Brother Lawton lived for. And so let us, through our emptiness and through our tears and through whatever emotions that we may be going through, let us look through that and see what Brother Lawton was striving to do and bringing me here to motivate you to reach out to save souls and to help souls stay sane. Amen. So I want you to work with me this week. I want you to work with me because it's not going to be too easy for me. We all going through this together, but we will get through this together. Amen. Some of you, how many people have been here uh, over 40 years? You've been here over 40 years. Well, some of the other people that had been here over 40 years don't realize that I have been coming here every two years ever since 1978. 1978. Every two years or so. It didn't come last year. 
Although Brother Lawton tried to get me to come, but I just flatly refused to come last year. This year, he called me, and I tried to get out of this year. I tried to get out of this year. I made every excuse I could make. And then Brother Lawton came back and put the scripture on me. And said, the Bible says, go into all the world and teach the gospel to every creature. And I don't see nowhere where the Bible says COVID should stop us from saving souls. I said, Brother Lawton, I'll be there. I'll be there. So here I am. He had saving souls on his mind. And I hope, trust, and pray that this workshop will serve as a memorial to each one of you that are here as to what you should be doing because this is what Brother Lawton lived for and this is what he died for and that he's to save souls and to help souls save. And I want to challenge everybody here this year to go out and save a soul in honor of Dr. Eugene Lawton. Save souls in honor of him. And I believe that he will be satisfied in doing that. With this in mind, we're going to go into our Sunday school uh, class. It is somewhat of the same thing that I do every year when I come, but I'm gonna put a little twist on. Uh, I'm gonna put a little twist on on this because of the situation. I'm gonna put a little twist on because of the situation. And some of you are familiar with. You know this is a workshop, and y'all know my style, don't you? You know my style, don't you? Everybody works in my workshop. You don't, you don't just sit here and look at me. So I'm passing some flyers out now. I'm passing some flyers out now. And everybody get a flyer and get a pen, a, 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 a pencil, and I want you uh, to work. I want you to work. Now, you, you, you may be familiar with some of this, but uh, I, I, we're going to do it again. I want everybody uh, uh, to work. And uh, we want you to uh, uh, get a pen, a pen. Come on, brother, help, help over this side. Help pass it by over this side. We got somebody pass it by over this side. Everybody get a sheet. Everybody go to work. Uh, beat me up, please. Evangelism, unity, uh, love, and church growth. Evangelism. Uh, uh, in unity in church growth. Unity in love in church growth. Brother Lawton uh, would want us first of all to be in unity. He would want us to be together during this particular time. He will want us to stick together. If it ever was a time for this congregation to gel together and to stick together, this is the time. He would want us to be unified. He would want us to be unified. He would want us to be together uh, because we are well aware of the devil. We're well aware of the devil as to how the devil can get in among us and start trying to work. And so uh, wherever, uh, what we want you to do is to think about being together with the leadership of this congregation and being together as a family during this tiring time. Let us be together. Don't let the devil, don't let the devil fool you because he will try to get in among us and cause confusion because 
of the leader that has been here so long working with us. And so that's one of the things that I want you uh, to uh, keep in mind is the fact that we must be together. Evangelism, uh, unity in love. Also, uh, he would want us to love one another. That is the key. Brother Lawton loved this church. He, Brother Lawton loved each one of you. He, he loved each one of you that are here. Anytime a man stay to a congregation over 50 years, it got to be some love there. Because it's not easy working with the modern day children of Israel. It's not easy. I know. I've been, I've been where I am uh, going on 49 years. June will be 49 years I've been at North Sign Church of Christ. And I got some cousins of the children of Israel here there. And I know it's not easy. But for, but for the Lord to be here for some, from over 50 years, then that means that he loves you. And you remember that. And he would want us to love one another. Amen. Show love to one another. Now, wherever you see the blue, that's where you're supposed to fill in the blank. You're supposed to fill in the blank. Members can hinder church growth more than any single thing. The members of the church right here, we can hear the church grow. Now, we want this church to grow. We want this church to take off as a result of this. We want the church to take off. Now, we don't understand sometimes why God does what he does. We don't understand that. But I believe that everything God does is good. Is good. It was the Apostle Paul that said that he works all things together for the good to those that are called to those who love him according to his purpose. And so we don't know quite yet the good that will come out of this, but I do know some good that can come out of this, and that is that we want don't want to hinder this church from growing because of what has taken place. This is what Brother Lord has done. This is the foundation that he has laid and this is why I am here today. I could have easily turned around and went back home. But no way, no way I can do that. Members can hinder the church growth. The Bible says in in Matthew 10, 36, a man's greatest enemy can be those of his own household. The greatest enemy, the greatest enemy to the church can be those of you that are sitting right here as far as the church growing is concerned. So don't be a problem as far as, as being an enemy to the lack of the growth of this church. We want to see this church grow, take all other results of that. We want to build on the foundation that Brother Lord has laid. We want to build on that. That's what we want to do. And that's what will make it happen. Fortunately, unfortunately, however you want to put it, uh, it is said that uh, the living don't know what the dead is doing, but... The dead know what the living is doing. And so therefore, if that be case, Brother Lawton is looking at us today. He's listening to us today. He's here today in spirit. Oh, yes, he is. And then members must grow spiritually before the church can grow successfully in number. Now, let me tell you something. Here's another point that we can get out of this. This is a time to grow spiritually. This is a time to go spiritually. Sometimes we can depend on one person too much. We can depend on one person too much. We have depended on Brother Lawton. I have, and by the way, you don't know this, but Brother Lawton is part of the reason why I am preaching today. Uh, well over 50, 60 years ago. I've been in the church around 60 years, and when I got into the church, I sat under his preaching and teaching and everything. He was young. He and I about the same age. His birthday is in February, I think. My birthday is in October. I'll be 85 in October. And they was preaching of a storm, and I sat down and I listened to them, and I said, I can do that. 
And his preaching and his teaching encouraged me to go into the ministry because we were about the same age. And I said, hey, they've been in the church longer than I have, but hey, I can do that. And so I start taping everything that they could do. The old wheel to reel tapes were in that. I would go and sit in the corner at lectureships and listen to them preach and teach. And I would tape everything that they was doing and come back and try to preach their sermon. Here I am today traveling all over the country as the results of this man. This man has inspired so many preachers and so many people over this brotherhood and everything. And we need to continue on this legacy that he has started. And we can do this by growing spiritually. Let's grow up spiritually. But the Lord would want us to grow spiritually. This is a test, brothers and sisters. It is a test. See, can't we go on as a result of this? We are not here necessarily because of Brother Lon. We're here because Jesus Christ died upon the cross and he was buried and he was resurrected. That's why he, and brother, he used, he used Brother Lon to get us here. Amen. Now, Brother Lon is gone. But the Bible says we got to grow, grow in grace. 2 Peter 3, 18 said grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We find that uh, members, uh, Jesus want unity in the church. Amen. Now if there ever was a time for us to be uh, unified, uh, this is the time for us to be unified. Be unified. Let us put our differences aside. In any given congregation, we got members, got, got little differences and everything. But let me tell you something. That could have been you. Let's put our differences aside and be in unity. And the one unity that Brother Lord will want us to be in is the unity of evangelism and saving souls and keeping souls saved. And so therefore what? Jesus Christ, he prayed for unity. When he was getting ready to go to the cross of Calvary, when he was getting ready to go to the cross of Calvary, he met with his disciples and, 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 and he prayed this prayer. And when he said, neither do I pray for these alone, he said, but I'm praying for all of those that shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, that thy father art in me and I in thee, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And that's what Brother Lord lived for. And that's what he died for, the fact that Jesus Christ died for our sins and that he was buried and resurrected on the third day. And we ought to be in unity. We ought to be together on doing that. Our mind ought to be set to leave here and go and bring somebody so that they can hear the gospel. Members must learn to receive one another as Christ received us if the church is to grow successfully in numbers. We want this church to grow. We got to learn to receive one another. How in the world we're going to bring new people into the church when we don't get along ourselves? You can't get along with your brothers and sisters that you already know. How are we going to get along with brothers and sisters new that comes into the church? We can run more out of the church than we can get into the church. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so... We must learn how to receive one another. We got to love one another anyway. You know that? And let me tell you something about love. I just did a, I just did a series of lessons back home, all family wearing. I'm still doing a series of love back home. Let me tell you about love. Let me tell you a little bit about love. Love is not about the other person. Love is not about the other person. It, it's, about, it's about your relationship with God. He loved us. We, we, he first loved us, and so therefore, we love him because he first loved us. Romans 5 and 8, the Bible says that God committed his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Meaning what? We must love not expecting nothing back. 
Let me help you out. Y'all know I do a lot of free stuff when I'm doing workshops. Free stuff. Husbands, you love your wife not expecting nothing back. Wives, you, you love your husband not expecting nothing back. And that's what's wrong with a lot of families today. Uh, I give to her and she don't give me nothing back. I give to him, he don't give. That's not the love of God. The love of God, I give to you and I don't expect nothing back. You can do it if you want to. If you don't want to, I'm going to love you anyway. And I'm not going to have an attitude because you don't love me back. That's God's love. That's the agape love. That's the love that we are to have for one another. It's giving, not receiving. But how many of us can do things and reach out to others and reach out to one another not expecting something back? And when you don't get it back, you get all upset and all out of proportion and, 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 and all of that kind of stuff. That's not the love of God. Jesus Christ, God, he loved us when we didn't love ourselves. John 14 and 15, the Bible says, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. So now is the time for us to grow in love. Christ received us in at least three ways. He received us with love and as we are and as God's children. Going back to Romans, the uh, 15th chapter. Let's look at that just a moment. And do I have a reader? Do I have a reader? Do I have somebody that can read? Yeah. The Bible tells us that the strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. The strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. And of course, we should, we should recognize that we got weak Christians and we got strong Christians in the church here. And we're going to get strong Christians and weak Christians in the church. But we that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. And not to please ourselves. We ought to be willing to recognize that everybody is not where we are. Everybody not where we are when it comes to uh, the church. When it comes to uh, living the Christian life. And I know that we got some people who has grown to the point when that they can't grow no more and they, they already got their ticket punched and they are ready uh, to go to heaven. They're just waiting on Jesus to come. You so strong, you know everything. But I stopped by to tell you, my friends, you don't know everything. He says in the second verse of Romans 15, let every one of us please his neighbor for good for his good to edification it's a time now for us to edify one another if if you see a sister or a brother here now weeping and can't hardly handle what has taken place and you are so strong why don't you console them why don't you console them why don't you why don't you get with them and why don't you console them? Why don't you encourage them? Why don't you say some encouraging words to them? Let us come encourage one another. Everybody don't take this the same way. Everybody doesn't take this the same way. Some people was closer to, 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 to Brother Lawton than others. And so let us encourage one another. He says, in Romans 15 and 3, for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproach of them that reproached thee fell on me. And he says, whatsoever things that was written aforetime was written for our learning, then through patience and comfort of the scripture, we might have hope. And then 
he says this. Now the God of patience and consolation grants you to be like-minded towards one another according to Jesus Christ. We got to be patient with one another during this time because we react different ways. We're going to be act, react in different ways. We got to be patient with one another. We got to be patient. Not only that, he says, and that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. One mind. We got to have one mind if we're going to grow the church. If we're going to grow this church, the one mind for the church is saving souls and keeping souls safe. That is the one mind that Jesus Christ had. That's the one mind that God has. That's the one mind that Jesus taught the disciples to have. And that is the one mind that the disciples taught the church in the first century. And that is the one mind that we are to have today is saving souls. The next subject during the rest of the week will be doing evangelism as we go. Doing evangelism as we go. And we'll talk about that in the next service. But uh, he says in the seventh verse, wherefore receive one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. He receives us with love and as we are and as God's children. We must receive one another with unconditional love. That's how we got to do. If you want a church to grow, create an atmosphere of love here. Let's love. Some of you are here right now because of the love that's here. That's why you're here. If you, didn't, if you didn't have love, if you didn't feel like you were loved, you would not be here. If you want to grow the church, just start loving one another. Just start loving people that come into your midst. Showing them love. The brother said a while ago when he introduced it, me, he happened to be at Northside. And some of you have been at Northside. That's one of the reasons, one of the things that we, we, we strive on love and hospitality. And that's how we have grown the church. And that's how we keep our member is loving them. You know you don't walk away from a good love. Do I have anybody in here got a good love? I have anybody. I've been married 64 years. Uh, coming this October, I've been married 64 years. And I ain't going nowhere. My wife ain't going nowhere. You know why? Because there's some love there. Somebody said after being married 64 years, ain't nowhere to go. Ain't nowhere to go. Who gonna have me? Who gonna have me? Ain't nowhere to go after 64 years. I don't want to go nowhere. 64 years and still kicking. <laughs> uh, 64 years. Don't tell me you can't do it. And that's because of love. It's because of love. Because of love. Just go home and, and, and just love one another. Love one another in this church. God loves you. Bible says that God commended his love towards us and that's why we are still, uh, while we were in sin, he loved us. First John 4, 9 through 10, the Bible says that we love him because he first loves us. John 13, 34 and 35, Jesus Christ, after washing the disciples' feet and everything, John 13 and 15, he said, I have given you an example. And then he said, 13, 34 and 35, he said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And he said, by this, all men, they will know that you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. And so, and so, and so we got to receive one another with love. Everybody not like you. Everybody not like you. 
Everybody don't have the same education you have. Everybody don't have the same money that you have. Everybody don't live where you live. Everybody don't talk like you talk. Everybody don't act like you act. But they have been baptized into the church of Christ. They are children of God and they deserve love for one another. We must receive one another as we are. Jesus Christ is the one that says in Matthew 11, 28, 29, Come unto me, all of ye that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, My yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Yeah, Jesus, he received people, he received them. And we got to learn how to receive people. You got a lot of lost people out there. And we need to try to bring them to Christ. But not only this, but we must receive one another as God's children. Galatians 3, 26 and 27 said, For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of us that have been baptized into Christ, we have put on Christ. So we are Christians. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And we got all kinds of brothers and sisters in Christ. And so therefore we are to love all of them. It's not about how they act. It's not how they look. Not, it's not how they smell. It's how, they, how we are to love them anyway. It's not, I don't care how they mess up. I don't care how bad they may get. We are to still love them anyway. Brother, when you put five fingers up, I think you're waving at me. And I'm waving back at you. Praise the Lord. But I got to deserve the time because you know if Brother Lord was sitting here, he'll stop me. <laughs> he'll stop me in my track. He said, that's enough. That's it. Yeah, I know you ain't going to do that. But my buddy, my friend, I just love him. I just love that man. I love him. And I thank God for him. We must grow spiritually and we must grow to love one another as children of God. We are children of God. And then, as I conclude, we must receive one another as Christ receives us. We must, we need love. Is there anybody here got enough love? Anybody here, you got enough love, you don't, want, you don't want no more love. You got all the love that you can get. Do, do anybody here need some more love? Yeah. Do anybody here need some more love? You need some more love. Look around you. Why, do you, why are you in need of love and all of these people got love here? Give somebody some love. Say something to show your love. Give them something to show your love. I'm encouraging my congregation, I'm encouraging people, just do something every week or every month. Just do something out of the clear for somebody unexpectedly. Just, just do something for them. See, love is not about saying, I love you. God didn't say, said in heaven, say, well, I love the world. The Bible said, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but everlasting life. And then we must, we need acceptance. New people that comes into the church come up with hurts, hang up, and problems. And they need love. They need love. They need love. That's why we stand in need of love now because many of us come into the church. We was empty. We was empty. And so therefore, we ought to get love to the point where our cup runneth over. Show love to one another here. And when people walk into your door, they don't want to leave. They don't want to leave to go back out in that loveless society that's out there. They don't want to go back out there. When they find the love, what the world needs now. What the world needs now. What the world needs now. Is love. God's love. Agape love. And then we need care as a family. 
if that ever were the time for, we, for us to care for one another, this is the time for us to show care for one another. I want to see this congregation come together as a family and surround the Lawton family. Surround them and let them know that you love them and that you are with them. We are family. And families should love one another. And people would want to become a, a part of this loving and this caring family. What drew us to Christ? What caused us to leave from what we was doing out there and come to Jesus? It was love. Love lifted me. Now, we got a song leader here that can sing that song. I know. Can't you sing that song? Let us all stand, please. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peace for sure. Then, sinking to rise, to rise no more. But the master of the sea. Heard my despairing cry From the waters lifted me now save Am I, you know that love lifted me Love lifted me When nothing else could help Love lifted me You know that love Lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. His love lifted me. Let's give Brother McClendon a round of applause for a dynamic job. Dynamic job.